Hello Year 12. This was supposed to be the end of these holidays and uh, the day before you went back to school for your last term of Year 12. But it is not because we have been told to stay inside our houses for another at least three weeks. Personally, this is just my personal opinion, um, I'm optimistic that we're going to be going back to school after May half term. I could be completely wrong on this, maybe it's just wishful thinking on my part, but May half term is what I've got my sights set on. Um, I'm currently teaching times tables and phonics and I would much, much rather be teaching A level chemistry to you guys, um, but I'm not. So. Fingers crossed we go back after my half time so I can start making A-level videos for biology and chemistry and maths. I've got you guys. Because um, the idea of not going back to school until September is not fun. You know, it's not fun for you. It's also not fun for your parents. Um, now, for some of you, uh, teaching yourselves the rest of your A-level or the rest of maybe Year 12, half terms of Year 12, for some of you doing that from home is going to be easier than others. Some of you are going to have lots and lots of other priorities that are going to make it very hard for you to do that. Now, what I'm about to say now is not going to go down very well with your schools, but the most important thing at the end of this period is have you come out of this well. Now I know that's a really really wishy-washy term for me to use but I'm thinking about your physical health and your mental health and not necessarily your schoolwork. Your school is going to be setting you lots and lots of work to do. They are going to be expecting you to check in, to submit work to be marked and then respond to feedback. Kind of pretending like you're still in school but for some of you you are going to have lots and lots of other stuff going on at home which means you can't do that. Now if you can't get any schoolwork done during the day because the only thing you could get yourself out of bed for was doing a little exercise or if you had to spend the whole day looking after your younger siblings you know doing their schoolwork with them, looking after the, the house, doing the washing, maybe doing the cooking because your parents have to spend the time working and your parents have to spend the time working to make money so that they can feed you and to make sure that you don't end up homeless. If that is what you have to do, then that is what you have to do. That is an important and valuable contribution to the household. And if it means that you can't get any schoolwork done because of it, well, that's fine. In fact, that's more than fine. That's good. Because doing that, coming together is kind of like a team with your family to make sure everyone gets through this as well as we can is really what is needed at the moment. If you have to turn around to a school and say, no, I'm sorry, I can't do this because I'm doing this, 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 this. I'm doing 20 million other things in the day and actually A-levels at the moment aren't my priority. That is a perfectly reasonable and valid thing for you to say. And yeah, your schools probably won't be very happy with it, but However, if you are in the lucky position to have the space, the time, the energy, the mental capacity to do some A-level work, to start teaching yourself a little A-levels, then these are the things that you need to do. First of all, you need to find out what you need to know. So you get the specification statement and then you like, you know, for chemistry, biology, you can download those and maths, you can download those from my, um, my website or just get the specification statement and get a highlighter and say, I can do that bit, I can do that bit, I can do that bit. These are going to be really long, boring, teachery documents, but the specification is what the exam board will examine you on. So if there is something in there, if there is a sentence in there that you don't understand, then you've identified a gap in your knowledge and then you can go and fill in that gap. Now that gap could be um, asking your teacher to point you some resources, it could be um, watching a video, reading a book, but once you've identified the gaps, the important thing is filling in those gaps. Now don't just sit and watch a video or sit and read a book because that information is not going in properly. Make notes on it, write yourself questions on it, maybe if you team up with a friend and you both study the same topic and you both write a set of notes and then you swap those notes, you've written a set of questions, so that's good revision. You are then answering your friend's set of questions, that is good revision. It is really, really good for you to do this. It is a really, really good opportunity for you to um, spend some time learning how you revise best. 
Is it by using multiple choice questions? Is it by making mind maps? Is it by doing practice papers? Um, there is going to be a lot of spare time because, you know, once you've taken out travelling to school, once you've taken out gossiping with your friends, once you've taken out lots of other things, you might find yourself a little bit bored. So experiment with your studying a little bit change things up and see what we can move around see if we can make things better because if we find ourselves in a position where there are no exams in 2021 um we need to have a good year 13 so good classwork good end tropic test good mock results so that when your teachers are estimating your grades i really don't think this is going to happen but if it does happen we need to have good year 13 work to prove to your teachers what you can actually get. Now after May half term um, in year 12 teachers generally start talking about things like UKS applications and personal statements so spend a little bit of this time doing fantasy UKS applications. I'm not saying start writing it, I'm saying start watching some of the university vloggers, start looking at who's having fun at university and where are they, start looking at all the university prospectuses online and saying oh that one looks quite nice, that one's a bit far away, or oh, that one's campus university, that one's a city university, which one do I like best? Because this is a big big decision um, and Maybe use some of this time to start thinking about it. Um, have a look at different courses. Biochemistry at one university, that's what I did, is not exactly the same biochemistry at the other university. And lots of them will have breakdowns of units. Um, like one university might be really plant heavy, one university might be really um, species heavy. So go and see, you know, like, is there a particular unit that really, really takes your fancy? Is there something like a placement that really, really takes your fancy? Or are you abroad that really, really takes your fancy? Don't commit, don't make any permanent decisions, but just start having a look for something to do. Um, as soon as I get the time, I'm going to be making um, biology, chemistry, maths, A-level videos. They should be coming for you very, very shortly. Um, I can't do it now because I'm teaching times tables and phonics. I would much rather be making A-level chemistry videos as trying to get a five-year-old to learn his two times tables. Um, but that is what I'm doing. Um, and I literally can't wait to get back to making videos because I absolutely love it. Um, however, by the time you get to your exams in year 13, they will all be ready for you. So I know this is a bit of a rubbish period. Um, we will get through it together. And the most important thing for you is getting through it physically and mentally healthy. Um, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way, guys, through the end of this. And... Um, the whole of year 13.